Hello everyone, and welcome back to the final episode of Mass Effect 1. 3! Why did I say Mass Effect 1? How bizarre. Hammer's taken a hell of a beating. No one made it to the conduit. But Shepard is still on her feet. Here, these enemies can absolutely kill you pretty easily. Aim for center of mass rather than headshots. Stagger them and knock them back. Don't bother reloading. You can manually reload on this gun, but you actually don't even need to. Now get prepared for the enemy which <laughs> everyone hated, which has been altered for the extended cut, because popping out of the corner right here... ...is a Marauder. And this Marauder used to have full shields and was genuinely really hard to kill. Ooh, there's actually not a lot of wiggle room for killing that. Yeah, if you hear anyone in Mass Effect joking about Marauder shields... That's what it's a reference to, is that fucker. Right at the edge, just before we reach the conduit. up here too I followed you up but we didn't come out the same place no at least I don't think we did what's your surrounding look like <clears throat> you okay I feel like death but I'm moving It's dark. There's human remains scattered. Sounds familiar. I'm in a dark hallway. Reminds me of your description of the collector base. Uh, makes sense. You think they're making a reaper in here? <laughs> sure. They round them up on Earth, and send the people up here to be processed. This place is seriously grim. It looks like actual Whoa. hell. Anderson. One of the walls here just realigned itself. The place is shifting, changing. There's a chasm here, and more hallways like the one I was in. I think I'm near an exit. 
Yeah. That mission is a bit, like, the last mission on Earth is a bit frustrating that it's just... I, I had a lot higher hopes for it, and it's not bad, but it's just a bit of a kind of grueling slog through a... And they just... I see something up ahead. Might be a way to cross over. Don't get too far ahead of me. Yeah, they just throw a lot of very difficult enemies at you, and you don't have to make any, any tactical... Where do you think you're at? Just found that chasm you were talking about. Hold on. I see something. A control panel, maybe. I'm just gonna go on. Anderson? Well, that can't be a great sign. Damn it. But yeah, they just they just make you fight through a load of um, endless enemies rather than actually making it a bit more a bit more interesting, which is which is a slight disappointment. Um, but here we enter the real end game. Anderson! the means to survival. Control of the Reapers, and of you, if necessary. Mm. They're controlling you. I don't think so, Admiral. Controlling me is a lot different than controlling a Reaper. Have a little faith. When humanity discovered the mass relays, when we learned there was more to the galaxy than we imagined, there were some who thought the relays should be destroyed. They were scared of what we'd find, terrified of what we might let in. But look at what humanity has achieved. Since that discovery, we've advanced more than the past 10,000 years combined. And the Reapers will do the same for us again, a thousandfold. But... <sighs> Only if we can harness their ability to control. Bullshit! We destroy them, or they destroy us. And waste this opportunity? Never. You're playing with things you don't understand. With power, you shouldn't be able to use. I... don't believe that. If we can control it, why shouldn't it be ours? Because we're not ready. No. This is the way humanity must evolve. There's always another way. I've dedicated my life to understanding the Reapers. And I know with certainty, the Crucible will allow me to control them. And then what? Look at the power they wield. Look at what they can do. I see what they did to you. I took what I wanted from them, made it my own. This isn't about me or you. It's about things so much bigger than all of us. He's wrong. Don't listen to him. And who will you listen to, Shepard? An old soldier stuck in his ways, only able to see the world down the barrel of a gun? And what if he's wrong? What if controlling the Reapers is the answer? If we destroy the Reapers, this ends today. But if you can't control them, but I can! Are you willing to bet humanity's existence on it? I... know it will work. You can't, can you? They won't let you do it. No! I'm in control! No one is telling me what to do! Listen to yourself! You're... indoctrinated. No! No! The two of you so self-righteous! 
Do you think power like this comes easy? There are sacrifices. You sacrifice too much. Shepard, I... I only wanted to protect humanity. The Crucibles can control them. I know it can. I just... It's not too late. Let us go. We'll do the rest. I... Uh, I can't do that, Commander. Of course you can't. They own you now. You... You'd undo everything I've accomplished. I won't let that happen. Because of you, humanity is already undone. That's not true! They have the Citadel! They've got us fighting each other instead of fighting them! I just need to... You've done exactly what the Reapers wanted. You're still doing it because they control you. I... They're too strong. You're stronger. Don't let them win. Break their home. Don't let them control you. I tried, Shepard. Commander? We did it. Yes, we did. It's uh, quite a view. <laughs> Best seats in the house. Feels like years since I just sat down. I think you earned a rest. Mm. Mm. Stay with me. We're almost through this. You did good, child. You did good. I'm proud of you. Thank you, sir. Shepard? Commander? I, uh... What do you need me to do? Nothing's happening. The crucible's not firing. It's gotta be something on your end.
Commander Shepard. I don't see. I'm not sure how to. Commander. Wake up. Part of me. I need to stop the Reapers. Do you know how I can do that? Perhaps. I control the Reapers. They are my solution. The solution to what? Chaos. The created will always rebel against their creators. But we found a way to stop that from happening. A way to restore order. By wiping out organic life? No. We harvest advanced civilizations, leaving the younger ones alone. Just as we left your people alive the last time we were here. But you killed the rest. We help them ascend, so they can make way for new life, storing the old life in Reaper form. I think we'd rather keep our own form. No, you can't. Without us to stop it, synthetics would destroy all organics. We've created the cycle so that never happens. That's the solution. You said you're the catalyst, but... What are you? A construct. An intelligence designed eons ago to solve a problem. I was created to bring balance. To be the catalyst for peace between organics and synthetics. So you're just an AI? In as much as you are just an animal, I embody the collective intelligence of all Reapers. But you were created. Correct. By who? By ones who recognized that conflict would always arise between synthetics and organics. I was first created to oversee the relations between synthetic and organic life, to establish a connection. But our efforts always ended in conflict, so a new solution was required. <laughs> the Reapers. Precisely. I met your creators. They told me what you did to them. We did as we were expected. They said you betrayed them. That you turned them into Harbinger. When they asked that I solve the problem of conflict, they failed to understand they were part of the problem themselves. The flaws of their organic reasoning could not perceive this. They lacked the foresight to understand their destruction was part of the very solution they required. Well... They've joined this war now. And I welcome their involvement. I am only facilitating their request. Where did the Reapers come from? Did you create them? My creators gave them form. I gave them function. They, in turn, give me purpose. 
The Reapers are a synthetic representation of my creators. Leviathan. Yes. They created me to oversee the relations between synthetic and organic life. To establish a connection. They became the first true Reaper. They did not approve, but it was the only solution. You've said that before. But how do the Reapers solve anything? Organics create synthetics to improve their own existence, but those improvements have limits. To exceed those limits, synthetics must be allowed to evolve. They must, by definition, surpass their creators. The result is conflict, destruction, chaos. It is inevitable. Reapers harvest all life, organic and synthetic, preserving them before they are forever lost to this conflict. We're at war with the Reapers right now. You may be in conflict with the Reapers, but they are not interested in war. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. When fire burns, is it at war? Is it in conflict? Or is it simply doing what it was created to do? We are no different. We harvest your bodies, your knowledge, your creations. We preserve it, to be reborn in the form of a new Reaper. Like a cleansing fire, we restore balance. New life, both organic and synthetic, can once again flourish. What do you know about the Crucible? The device you refer to as the Crucible is little more than a power source. However, in combination with the Citadel and the Relays, it is capable of releasing tremendous amounts of energy throughout the galaxy. It is crude, but effective and adaptive in its design. Who designed it? You would not know them, and there is not enough time to explain. We first noted the concept for this device several cycles ago. With each passing cycle, the design has no doubt evolved. Why didn't you stop it? We believe the concept had been eradicated. Clearly, organics are more resourceful than we realized. But you're taking away our future. Without future, we have no hope. Without hope, we might as well be machines. Programmed to do what we're told. You have hope, more than you think. The fact that you are standing here, the first organic ever, proves it. But it also proves my solution won't work anymore. So now what? We find a new solution. Why are you telling me this? Why help me? You have altered the variables. <laughs> what do you mean? The Crucible changed me, created new possibilities, but I can't make them happen. If there is to be a new solution, you must act. It is now in your power to destroy us. But be warned, others will be destroyed as well. The Crucible will not discriminate. All synthetics will be targeted. Even you are partly synthetic. What exactly will happen? Your Crucible device appears to be largely intact. However, the effects of the blast will not be constrained to the Reapers. Technology you rely on will be affected, but those who survive should have little difficulty repairing the damage. There will still be losses, but no more than what has already been lost. But the Reapers will be destroyed? Yes, but the peace won't last. Soon, your children will create synthetics, and then the chaos will come back. There has to be another way. There is. You could instead use the energy of the Crucible to seize control of the Reapers. Right after all. 
Yes, but he could never have taken control, because we already controlled him. But I can? You will die. You will control us, but you will lose everything you have. How can I control the Reapers if I'm dead? Your corporeal form will be dissolved, but your thoughts and even your memories will continue. Your connection to your kind will be lost, though you will remain aware of their existence. But the Reapers will obey me? Yes. We will be yours to control and direct as you see fit. There is another solution. Synthesis. And that is? Add your energy to the crucibles. The chain reaction will combine all synthetic and organic life into a new framework. A new DNA. Explain how my energy can be added to the crucible. Your organic energy, the essence of who and what you are, will be broken down and then dispersed. To do what, exactly? The energy of the crucible, released in this way, will alter the matrix of all organic life in the galaxy. Organics seek perfection through technology. Synthetics seek perfection through understanding. Organics will be perfected by integrating fully with synthetic technology. Synthetics, in turn, will finally have full understanding of organics. It is the ideal solution. Now that we know it is possible, it is inevitable we will reach synthesis. Why couldn't you do it sooner? We have tried a similar solution in the past. But it has always failed. Why? Because the organics were not ready. It is not something that can be forced. You are ready, and you may choose it. I... I don't know. Why not? Synthetics are already part of you. Can you imagine your life without them? And there will be peace? The cycle will end. The Reapers will cease their harvest, and the civilizations preserved in their forms will be connected to all of us. Synthesis is the final evolution of all life. The paths are open, but you have to choose. And here we have it. The big choice before us. Destroy the Reapers. Control the Reapers, or synthesize all organic and synthetic life. The destroy ending sounds too risky. There's too much damage that could be done. We've So much of our effort has gone into, you know, think about Edie, think about the Geth. How we would work without synthetics. It's a, who knows, and, and it's, there's so much still up in the air if we were to choose that, uh, that option, and there's no guarantee that we wouldn't then fall fate to exactly what the the catalyst is describing of of the of we synthetics might eventually destroy us again the the same problem would arise the control em ending seems i mean it's what the elusive man was going for so that's always a bit troubling <sighs> controlling the reapers would be powerful but would it end the war would it create peace or would it be peace at the hands of you know a dictator god emperor shepherd no i think the only real answer is not stay where we are, not go back to how we were before, but to push forward to find something new, something different, and some way of actually overcoming this problem. I choose synthesis. Disengage and get 
get the hell out of here. Joker, it's time to go.
I am alive. All of us, synthetic and organic, have been changed. The war is over, and the Reapers are helping to rebuild. Where once they threatened us with extinction, they now bring us the collective knowledge of the cultures that came before. As a galaxy, we can now live the lives we have wished for. Taking our first steps into a new and wonderful future, where organics and synthetics can coexist peacefully. With peace across the galaxy and with unlimited access to knowledge, to recover the greatness that was lost. and surpass it. We will reclaim our worlds and the stars as the line between synthetic and organic disappears. We may transcend mortality itself to reach a level of existence I cannot even imagine. And we will remember that this chance for a new life did not come without cost. No matter how far we advance, we will remember the sacrifices of those who made it possible. And we will remember Shepard. Because of her, I am alive. And I am not alone. And there we have the end of Mass Effect 3. I'll talk about endings in a bit, actually, after the credits. Um, don't worry, I'll go through what the other options are and what that was all about. Holy shit. Uh, it's, 
I finished Mass Effect, the whole trilogy. My Xbox survived. Jesus Christ, it was getting to the point where like sometimes I had to like literally turn it on multiple times to get it to actually load it properly. I was so scared it was wasn't going to make it. But it has managed. It has survived, which is stunning to me. 200 episodes nearly all three games together have been. And it's been a great journey and I've genuinely really enjoyed it. Let's talk a little bit about... The extended cut, this was a thing that, that was released uh, a month or two after the game came out. The main, uh, One of the major complaints people had is that decisions didn't seem to matter other than decisions gave you effective military strength, EMS, and that was all that determined kind of the endings. So that whole bit narrated by Edie at the end, that was new. All of the endings have that little section now, they're different and I'll talk through them in a sec. Previously it only ended on like watching the ship normally crash on the planet and then people come out and that was it. You didn't get that bit of kind of like follow-up of where characters are at, but also kind of like a bit more of an explanation of what's really going on with the with the ending you chose. So the extended cut fixed that, uh, fixed some kind of just what we consider plot holes kind of going into the um, final mission, and also one of the, it got rid of one of the real plot holes, that one of the real plot holes they had was that pretty much all eight endings, apart from the synthesis one, both destroyed the mass relays like permanently. And literally people did analyses afterwards and they were like, half the fucking galaxy is near Earth, which is fucked up at the moment. Even with like faster than light travel, it would take them centuries to reach even like the nearer stars uh, or like nearer um, systems. And we were just like, no matter the, no matter how much stuff there is around there, um, the universe is fucked. The like, galaxy is fucked out the relay, so they've kind of basically that is now tied to EMS. That still happens if you have quite low uh, EMS, but if you have higher EMS, um, then you can do the control and the destroy the Reapers endings with much less um, damage to the university. University, universe. Um, as for the game as a whole, um, I'd say the game is it's good, it plays pretty well, um, and it concludes the trilogy quite well. I'd say it suffers kind of from side quest problems of its side quests aren't great and also they just don't really make any sense, like, with the way it's like, the, 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 the game just doesn't really have much space for um, side quests and yet it has loads in it anyway. And the time pressures of what's like priority and what's not are unclear and sometimes problematic, but it's... Yeah, it, I'd say it concludes the trilogy really well. The Tuchanka and the Rannik missions are really good. I think they are great payoffs to like a load of work that's gone into storytelling the entire trilogy. And I really like the Leviathan DLC. I think they're actually explaining the Reapers quite well. I don't know if I'm unusual in this, but I quite like the motivation of the Reapers and the Harvest. That all kind of makes sense. And if you accept that that's what the Reapers were created for and that's their function, the options that are presented to Shepard by the Catalyst, they all make sense. Um, and and within that that kind of that structure, I think I think they're fine the options a lot of people complain that it wasn't the ending they wanted uh whenever that comes up i do like to challenge people to you know what would have been a satisfying ending i think it's partly because this is a system built on choice and i think everyone wanted it to be very much their own but to, to be honest i'm happy enough with what they did and the fact that they show you you know little bits of your decisions making things like today we see jack teaching our students uh, if we made some other decisions we'd see jack mourning at the graves of our students um we see um what you call Kasumi kind of re-meeting with the kind of like the, the, the grey box ghost of, of Keiji again because we've allowed synthetic life to, to flourish a bit more in that way. So it's little things like that that, that make it feel still like it is it is my ending. Um, and I'd say, yeah, uh, the game the gameplay by and large was pretty good in this. The combat is is better than in, in previous ones. Even if the final mission, as I talked about earlier, was a bit was a bit guff. Um, but yeah, the combat's fairly swish. The search and rescue kind of system, I think, is better than planet scanning in Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 1's, like, field exploration stuff. And I'd say the way that, like, the synergy between, like, weapons and armor and powers, I'd say that works better in Mass Effect 3 than in either of the other games, if I'm honest. Um, it's nice that you have options of weapons, even if you're not proficient in them, which is, which is quite nice. I'd say the DLCs that I've done in this series, from Ashes and Leviathan, are both pretty good think they definitely should be included like it's clear that the idea for like um how the reapers work and the point of the cycle have been decided on really early on like you can see hints of that story are dropped in mass effect one and stuff like that it was always the plan therefore i feel like leviathan should have been included but it wasn't um same with from ashes with their thing there's the other two DLCs. There's Omega, which is all right, a little bit bland, but there it is. Uh, and the citadel DLC is a lot of just side content i have no immediate plans to do either 
But drop me comments, let me know if it's in, if people are interested, it is something I, I am happy to kind of do. So drop a comment, and just drop a comment overall, like, what did you think of the series, if, especially if you've watched, like, the whole trilogy, because I'll be honest, this has been a huge amount of work for me, planning it and stuff like that, and and, and just executing it and the timing on it and, and all of that, and I really feel at least like I have done it justice, <laughs> as much as I can. Um, obviously, it's a massive series, um... But I've really enjoyed it. And and Mass Effect 3 I have particularly enjoyed, actually. I remember Mass Effect 2, I tended to record Mass Effect 2 in little bursts, like two or three episodes at a time, and I was really busy at the time doing my PhD, and it was just a bit of a nightmare. Whereas this one, I've been able to set aside the time to, like, I mean, so I started tonight, I started uh, with the collect, not uh, collect base. I made that same issue four hours ago, uh, that I started with the Cerberus base tonight. So it's, it's... I'm able to do these kind of longer recording sessions, which I think helps me get into it a lot better, really. Um, and I've actually really enjoyed, like, recording and it. The people who've been watching it live as it goes along will notice I've barely missed an upload on it. Three episodes a week, happily done. I'm a man. Um, and I've always been nicely kind of ahead with it, because because I've enjoyed it and always kind of wanted to be recording more of it. But what comes next? Um, well, there's a bit more of the game, actually, after the credits. Then, there's, then I'm going to talk about endings for a bit. But overall, next, uh, I'm going to finish up uh, the... Um, Wind Waker randomizer. I have finished up that Wind Waker randomizer, but I'm going to release that footage, I should say. Um, and then we get onto my next major project, um, which is going to be mixing it up a bit. Time to go back to something that's a bit less of a less of a, no need for massive overarching plans and heavily plot driven and, and games and like that. So I will of course drop a trailer for that that's going to come after we've talked about endings for a bit. Um, but we'll talk about endings after we enjoy the post credit scene. Because yes, that's a thing that we do now. It's like a Marvel film. Um, including, um, keep your eyes out. Um, well, ear peeled, actually. It includes a very interesting voice cameo. You may not recognize his voice. You'll have heard of the person. I'd be stunned if you haven't. But uh, have a listen in this scene. Did that all really happen? Yes, but some of the details have been lost in time. It all happened so very long ago. When can I go to the stars? One day, my sweet. What will be there? Anything you can imagine. Our galaxy has billions of stars. Each of those stars could have many worlds. Every world could be home to a different form of life. And every life is a special story of its own. Tell me another story about the shepherd. It's getting late, but okay. One more story. Not a voice you might know, but that is the voice of second man on the moon, Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> they managed to get in for that, which is quite cool. Congratulations on bringing in to the Reaper threat. Commander Shepard has become a legend, and from here you can continue to build that legend. This initially just said, and from here you can continue to build that legend with DLC. And that was it. Uh, <laughs> that made a lot of people angry. It has been a long journey for Shepard and the team here at Bioware. And me. And like Shepard, we couldn't have done it alone. The Mass Effect trilogy began as the vision of a small team, but over the years it has grown. That growth has been fueled and shaped by the feedback and support of our player community. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and me in this journey. And we look forward to sharing further adventures with you in the Mass Effect universe. And now it reloads an autosave um, just before you start on the, on the I keep calling the collector base, the um, Cerberus headquarters. So let's talk about endings. So, as you will obviously have seen, there's three endings. There's actually four, but we'll talk about D, none of the above, uh, in a little bit later. We saw the en ending that's known as Synthesis. Synthesis actually has the highest um, number of kind of, uh, the highest uh, requirement in terms of EMS. So if we look at EMS, um, so you've got your three engines, uh, endings. Destroy, the red one, Control in blue, and Synthesis in green. If your EMS is below 1,749, very specific, only one of those two options, only one of the three options will be available, and it's depending on what Shepard did in Mass Effect 2. 
If you save the collector base, then control will be available, and only control. If you destroy the collector base, only destroy will be available. Um, both at that level will result in massive damage to Earth and the relay network and have a shit ton of collateral damage, but it's hard to go into uh, the end with that little, little low EMS. You'll also probably lose one or both of the squad mates uh, that join you on the final run to the conduit. You may have noticed that with Garrison and Liara, it looks a bit rough for them. They can absolutely die then if your EMS is low enough. If your EMS is a bit higher, um, between 17,000... 50 and 23,049. Destroy and control are both available, but each still causes some damage to the galaxy. Uh, if you've got a little bit more, up to 2,949, uh, 2,649 even, then the control option causes no damage to the galaxy, but destroy still does. Above 2,650, neither the destroy or control options cause any physical harm to the galaxy, really, and, and the catalyst tells us as much now. Um, once you're above 2,800, the synthesis ending and what we saw becomes available. And then there's one final threshold, but I'll talk about that in a second. So, what do the other endings look like? Basically, this was a criticism at the time. Colors! Um, th synthesis is a green beam, destroy is a red beam slash wave, and control is a blue one. And the initial scenes of, like, the war ending look rather similar. Obviously, in, in, in Destroy, the Reapers fall apart, whereas in Control, much like in Synthesis, they kind of take off. Um, what really then actually changes is the stuff with... Because that's the thing, that's, that's all you saw in the original game. I can see why that was really annoying. But then you get now, with the extended cut, you get the different scenes. We saw In Synthesis, we saw the one narrated by Edie. In the Destroy option... Well, it destroys all synthetic life, as, as we mentioned, so you get this red beam that flies out, uh, and the Crucible fires this beam through the relay network, spreading the blast across the galaxy, severely damaging every relay in the Citadel in the process, but if your EMS is high enough, uh, repairs happen, and you get this ending narrated by Admiral Hackett. over. The Reapers have been defeated. Against all odds, and in the face of the greatest threat this galaxy has ever known, we survived. We suffered many losses. The relays are severely damaged. But we won. This victory belongs to each of us. Every man, woman, and child. Every civilization. On every world. Now, as we take our first steps toward restoring what we lost, we must remember what it took to win. This wasn't a victory by a single fleet a single army, or even a single species. If this war has taught us anything, it is that we are at our strongest when we work together. And if we can put down our grievances long enough to stop something as powerful as the Reapers, imagine what we can achieve now that they are defeated. It will take time, but we can rebuild everything that was destroyed. Our homes, our worlds, our fleets and defenses, all of this and more. Together, we can build a future greater than any one of us could imagine. A future paid for by the sacrifices of those who fought and died alongside us. A future that many will never see. And while we still have many challenges ahead of us, we can face them together. honor those who died to give us that future.
this is the good version of it, because it's the one I was actually able to choose. If the MS is much lower, um, Hackett's narrative is much more bleak, uh, where he's like, oh, we're kind of fucked. Uh, but again, you have to have quite low EMS for that to happen. There's one final little, little change to that one, but I will discuss it later. The blue option, control. So once again, we see um, Shepard Shepherd kind of plugs herself into the system, and we get a blue ray that goes around and, and, and wipes out, and kind of goes through all the Reapers and, and controls them. Um, the relay and network in the Citadels are damaged, but not that badly, especially if, if your EMS is pretty high. You then get one of two different kind of narratives, which is narrated by now ascended God Emperor Shepard. Eternal. Infinite. Immortal. The woman I was used these words. But only now do I truly understand them. And only now do I understand the full extent of her sacrifice. Through her death, I was created. Through my birth, her thoughts are freed. They guide me now. Give me reason. Direction. Just as she gave direction to the ones who followed her. The ones who helped her achieve her purpose. Now my purpose. To give the many hope for a future. To ensure that all have a voice in their future. The woman I was knew that she could only achieve this by becoming something greater. There is power in control. There is wisdom in harnessing the strengths of your enemy. I will rebuild what the many have lost. I will create a future with limitless possibilities. I will protect and sustain. I will act as guardian for the many. And throughout it all, I will never forget. I will remember the ones who sacrificed themselves. So that the many could survive. And I will watch over the ones who live on. Those who carry the memory of the woman I once was. The woman who gave up her life to become the one who could save the many. And that one is the Paragon one, because again, that's the one I had access to. If it's a Renegade one, it's certainly a lot more fascist in its kind of like we have this power to control and will we will have peace by crushing anyone who dares stand against us uh it's perhaps a little bit more negative um and then finally the hidden option which not many people actually come across naturally d none of the above either through uh conversation options with the catalyst you can refuse to activate the crucible or you can do what i did here and turn your gun on him and he walks off the cycle continues everyone's harvested everyone dies and then what we get is a epilogue from Liara's um, little memory pod, uh, like time capsule thing that she told us about. If you're hearing this, then there is still hope. Hope that you can avoid the same mistakes we made. We fought the Reapers, but we failed to stop them. We did everything we could. We built the Crucible, but it didn't work. We fought as a united galaxy, but it wasn't enough. I only hope the information in this capsule is enough to help you before it's too late. My name is Dr. Liara Tassoni. Herein lies the recounting of our war with the Reapers. 
And that's an interesting one because also if you watch that ending, you don't get the um, you don't get the achievement for beating the game um, because as the game considers, you don't beat the game. Um, it's generally considered, based on the MS thing, that Synthesis is the best ending. It's certainly perhaps the hardest to unlock. But if you have your EM... So Synthesis is unlocked at 2,800. At 3,100, if you choose the Destroy option, you get this ending. So it's unclear, and it'll be really interesting because apparently they're doing Mass Effect, a game that follows on from this now, so they'll have to actually decide canonically what happens at the end of this because you see an older looking Liara in the future um, and it looks a bit more like perhaps the destroy option happened and maybe maybe that's the canonical ending is the destroy option happens and Shepard survives. We don't know. Um, I guess they'll have to decide that when, when that Mass Effect comes out. But that's kind of, that's all the kind of options there. Um, and that's kind of how it all looks. The 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 stargazer scene at the end. I'm not a huge fan of that. Tell me another story of the shepherd. Um, but but it is what it is. But all in all, I think the ending system is pretty good. I think it's there's possibly room for improvement. But God, if I don't know what I'd do. So there you have it. And on that note, it has been however many episodes, 71 of this and 197 of all three Mass Effect games put together. Thank you very much for joining me on that whole journey if you have. If you've only joined me for Mass Effect 3, it's still um, great of you to have done that. And I hope you'll join me for what comes next. Good day.